Hi, grade six, Miss Helen in here. Uh, I just thought I would show you uh, <clears throat> in a quick video what I'm going to do with these delicious fall apples that I got while I was visiting Mrs. Wachanko. And these are the apples that were um, growing on her apple tree. So she gave me some and you can see again that she has two different kinds of apples growing on one tree because somebody uh, grafted two trees together for her. So what I'm going to do is make apple cider. It's a wonderful fall drink. And I'm going to use my steam juicer, first of all, to juice, um, to get the juice out of the apples. So there was a, there's an old saying about how an apple a day keeps the doctor away. So there's a lot of wonderful nutritional value in apples. And, um, I just decided because these apples are so tiny that um, I was going to juice them. I thought that would be the easiest thing to do. And I'll use the juice to make apple cider. So my steam juicer, the bottom pan has water in it. And then you put this big pot on top. It's a little bit spotty. I have well water or farm water, so my water kind of does that to things. Um, you put this big top on pot, on top. The top pot looks like a, it has holes in it. It's a little bit stained from something else I was making. So you just put your fruit in the top here, stems and all. So it's a really easy thing to use. I might cut these bigger apples up into halves or quarters just so that they cook at the same time or similar time to these smaller ones. Um, and as they're cooking, the juice goes through these holes into this middle layer of the pot and then comes out this hose into a container that I still have to put there. And so I'm able to get the juice away from the skins and the pulps just by cooking the apples in this special pot. It's probably going to take a couple of hours, so I will come back and show you how that's progressing. So my apples are cooking now, and they've been cooking for about 45 minutes. I set the time on my clock. Um, was When I started cooking them, it was 9.15, so now it's 10 o'clock. And I just wanna show you how the water at the bottom of the pot that I showed you at the beginning is boiling. The steam that's created from the boiling water, you can see it there rising a little bit. Some of it is escaping outside of the pot, uh, but the steam is lighter than the water. So when water boils, we get to a boiling temperature at 100 degrees Celsius, it creates steam. So the steam is 100 degrees Celsius or higher. In a closed container, it would be hotter than that. And the steam is what is rising up to cook the apples. So I'm just going to lift the lid there a little bit and you can see the steam and you can also see how the apples are starting to mush down. As they cook, again, through those holes in the top container of my steam juicer, the juice will collect in this middle chamber and then it will be able to run out this hose that has a clamp here to stop it from um, emptying and into this jar that I have set up on this chair. And so we have to be very careful when we're working with steam. Steam burns can be very painful and definitely steam can burn you because steam is 100 degrees Celsius or hotter. My apples have now been cooking since 9.15, it's 11.30. And when I look inside of here, there's all that steam. I have to be very careful that I don't put my face over it or I could burn my eyes. Um, I can see that most of the, you know, the apples are fairly cooked down and there's really not much left except this, the stems and the peels and the meat of the apple. So I think that we've probably extracted all of the juice that probably will be, that we will be able to extract from the fruit. And so it's going to be time now to put the apple juice that we have 
created that's trapped in this middle section of the pot into this jar. So I have dumped the apple, leftover apple bits into this pail for scraps for my chickens. I'll give that to them after that cools down. And now I'm going to drain all this beautiful apple juice. It smells delicious and it looks beautiful um, into this jar that I have ready here. So I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this in video at the same time, but I'll try here to show you how this works. I just open the clip here and the juice runs into the jar. So I have my apple juice uh, poured into this jar now. Um, so it was about 10 cups of apples that made this jar full of apple juice. And you could totally drink it just like this. The apples that were harvested for Mrs. Wachanko's tree were actually on the sweeter side. So I did taste this and I wouldn't even add any sugar to it because it tastes sweet enough as is. Um, however, if you were using tartar apples, you would add some sugar to taste. So now um, I'm choosing to use this apple juice to make an apple cider. So you could also just use a prepared apple juice to make cider, but I think it's really lovely to have these um, have the apple juice from these homegrown apples. So that's what I'm gonna to use today. So I have my crock pot here. You could probably use a regular pot, but I wanna use my crock pot so that I can just set it on the low temperature and let all of the spices amalgamate into the apple juice as I'm doing some other work today. So I'm going to go ahead and pour the apple juice into um, this crock pot. I actually had a little bit more than a jar full, so I'm gonna add what wouldn't fit in the jar. Sometimes it's hard to estimate the amount of juice that you're going to get. This is very hot, so we have to be careful that we don't spill on ourselves and burn. Add that to my crock pot. Now the recipe that I looked at said to also add orange and I think that would be quite nice. Um, cider is essentially spicy apple juice that you drink warmed up and this is a recipe also that can be frozen so you can make the cider and then freeze it um, and it will last for several months or of course you could just drink it fresh. It will last in your fridge for about three to five days. And anyway, so with the um, spices that we're going to be adding, I thought orange would be quite nice. So I've cut up an orange and I'm just going to add it, um, peel and all. I washed it really well first before I cut it up to my apple juice. I got cinnamon sticks here from Mum's Pantry. So the recipe said to add three of them. Of course, if you um, don't like you know something as as cinnamony, then you could add less. You can always adjust the spice to taste. And then I have one teaspoon of cloves here, uh, ground clove powder. So I'm going to add that to the crock pot. It already smells so delicious and it hasn't even started cooking yet. And then I'm just going to give that a little stir. The recipe actually called for two teaspoons of cloves. I'm reducing it to one teaspoon for now because I think that will be enough cloves for the amount of juice that I have. Um, however, as as the recipe is kind of stewing here in the crock pot, I can always add more later if I want to. So I'm gonna put the lid on, leave that set on low, and come back and check it in a couple of hours. My apple cider cooked for about four hours in the crock pot. I checked it after two hours and decided that it needed to stew a bit longer in order to develop the orange taste uh, in, so that it would be more bold. 
Now that I've decided that the flavors are to where I want them and I can taste the orange and the spices and the apple just enough, I've removed the orange wedges and the cinnamon sticks with tongs from the liquid and it is ready to serve. I have decided that I'm not adding sweetener because it is sweet enough with the fruit fruits that I used. And I will be serving some to my uncle who's harvesting out in the field right now. And he needs to watch his sugar intake, as should we all. And so with that, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you try this recipe, please let me know how it works out for you. Thanks for watching. I just wanted to say that the process of making apple cider reminded me of a couple of sayings. One is good food takes time and the other patience is a virtue. So as you could see, the process of making this took all day, really, uh, but it was well worth being patient. The end product is delicious and nutrient packed. And plus it's fun to make food with love and share with people that are important to you.